Well, I thought I'd show you how I go about making my uh, picture frames. My wife made this uh, lovely cross stitch. She spent a lot of time on it. So uh, I did a, I bought a, a Logan mat cutter and did a double mat for it. And we uh, stuck it, uh, the cross stitch fabric onto a backer board. There's the uh, mat cutter. And uh, now I'll show you how we uh, go about uh, making the frame. But before we can make the frame, I have to uh, cut some glass here. And uh, when using this glass, this glass from uh, Home Depot, I quickly discovered that you need to wear gloves. You can see right here, I have a uh, little band-aid on my finger that cut the uh, glass was razor sharp on the edge. So take, definitely make sure you uh, use gloves when you get this uh, kind of uh, framing glass, uh, picture frame glass. And uh, the way I, normally I'd like to use the, the Logan mat cutter because it has a, a cutting wheel you can buy accessory for it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the mat cutter I got could only handle a, a width of 29 inches or so. And the glass is uh, a larger width than that, so I couldn't put it in there and, and cut it uh, the way I needed to. So as you can see here, I used a uh, Sharpie marker to mark out the where I wanted to cut the glass, and then I put some uh, glass cutting oil. Uh, you could probably just use mineral oil or some other similar oil. For all I know, that I think the glass cutting oil is mineral oil. It certainly looks like it. Uh, since I'm not using the mat cutter, uh, the Logan mat cutter, I had to use this uh, glass cutting tool, as you see there. And just because it's kind of a long cut, I clamped one end of my uh, straight edge uh, carefully, not too much pressure. And then when you uh, make your cut, uh, cut only one time. Don't keep rescoring the line and, and don't cut on, you don't have to cut on both sides of the glass. And here I'm going to uh, break the glass. So I just put the edge of the, gla of the glass uh, where I've made my line and uh, clamped it with another board on top and then just pop it down. Uh, if the cut's on top, then you pop it down. Uh, if the cut's on the bottom, you pop it up. And here it is, stuck on top of the, now I've got most of my sand sandwich done. Uh, the sandwich is the uh, comprised of uh, backer board, which is what I'm cutting now, and the, and the mat boards and uh, the glass. And it's kind of important to, to determine the size of that sandwich so you know how deep the rabbit cut is going to be on your uh, uh, your frame, your wooden frame. Um, and again, I'm, I'm cutting, I'm using a jigsaw here to, to cut my backer board, rough cut it, uh, because it's, uh, it's just too wide of a cross cut for my table saw. And uh, so I'm going to rough cut it, and then I'll be able to do more of a rip cut on the table saw like uh, doing this uh, rough cut here with the, the two tables that are side by side. It's just a nice, easy way. I don't even have to clamp it. I can kind of hold it. Nothing drops or falls. So here we are. I'm setting up for the uh, rip cut, which is now easier on the table saw. See, I got my little splitter in there, although I really don't need a splitter for uh, this uh, MDF-like uh, backer board here. Still didn't hurt. And then I'm going to trim the other edge of the backer board. And there we go. Now I've got the backer board, the matting boards, the framed piece, and the glass. And that's the entire sandwich pieces together. It's actually quite thick, thicker than I, I was planning on. But uh, it, the uh, mahogany wood that I'm going to use uh, as my frame is still thick enough to leave me plenty of uh, space for my rabbit. So. Here I'm going to uh, do a little quick measure, see how thick this uh, s sandwich is. Uh, don't have to be too precise. Um, I think what I learned here is probably want to leave a little extra space, maybe a fraction of a, a 32nd inch or a 16th of an inch. Here I am cutting my uh, rough cutting the length of uh, my mahogany board that I have. It's already been... Uh, uh, made square on four sides. I'm just cutting the length. And uh, width of my frame is going to be uh, somewhere around two inches or so. 
And so here I'm showing when I'm going to rip the board into two pieces uh, to get uh, two of the long or short sides. Uh, here I'm showing uh, some of the uh, magnetic jigs I've created from some uh, machining mag uh, switches. Uh, this one here is for uh, attaching to the uh, fence because the top of my fence there in the middle has a, a metal and uh, got a rockler uh, featherboard so I clamp so I uh, turn the mag switch on on the fence lower the uh, featherboard tighten it down then I can push it back to the back side where I want to have it hold down the board and I have the same kind of a jig on the uh, uh, featherboard for pushing a, pushing it up against the fence and uh, here I'm gonna rip it and I'm just kind of ripping it so it's close to cutting the board right you know nearly uh, down the center so I get a fairly uh, equal width of uh, boards here and of course I'll do this for the uh, two long sides as well this I think this is the two short sides of the frame and and that'll get me a two, a four rough width cut uh, sides for the frame the two short and the two long and here they are the two short and two long and they're they're not exactly the same width they're pretty close and I like to use my uh, jointer since I don't have a drum sander to uh, just uh, stand them on edge and stack them together and then push them through the jointer here and, and make them all fairly uh, equal width just uh, run them through and that's that there we go now we got our four true boards equal width and here I'm going to use a uh, rabbiting bit it has the uh, uh, bearing on it roller bearing on it uh, I don't really need the fence uh, to help me run the boards but it just gives me a little extra guidance because the roller bearings out pushed outside the edge of the fence there the real advantage of the fence being like this is to give me the uh, dust extraction so I adjust the height uh, I, th I think I actually did two passes here instead of uh, one pass but you get the idea it's just a simple rabbit bit on the boards uh, just do one side on each of the boards feel more comfortable using a uh, push blocks and now I want to put a little round over on the face of the boards uh, so I'm going to change out the collet to a uh, in this case the, the previous bit needed the uh, half inch collet now I need a quarter inch collet and then and a 16th inch round over bit. So I kind of just show the process I'm, I use have set up here for my exact lift. I kind of speed up the process here so you get an idea. Just take out the zero in, uh, clearance insert. And I can, on my exact lift, a uh, Jessam exact lift here, I can crank it all the way to the top, take the wrenches to loosen the uh, nuts. And change out the collet. Got this quarter inch collet here, and this is the 1 16th inch round, round over bit. Uh, it's just, it's a very, very fine round over. It just kind of knocks the edge off, and I don't, I like the cleanness of it rather than sanding uh, the edge off. It's a, just a more consistent, quick way to knock the edge off the front faces. And then just crank it back down and set the uh, round over bit. Again, this has got a bearing on it, so don't really need the fence but it really helps a lot for the dust extraction so and then I run it side on uh, the front of the face you got a rabbit is facing up now and I run it on the outside and the inside edge in my case I wanted to uh, round over on both sides uh, in and inside and outside it inside and outside edge of the frame and uh, that takes care of that step and did it on all four boards And now we're going to use, I use my uh, 
miter saw to cut the 45 degree angles and you can see I got a, a, a backstop board there to kind of help with tear out that's kind of that's actually in this case it's very important if I don't have that there then I'll almost certainly have a little bit of tear out uh, I stacked the boards together uh, in in groups of twos so the two shorts and I cut them the edge off um, and then the two longs here you can see where it's important to measure from the inside edge of the rabbit for your uh, to match the size of that sandwich of the glass and uh, matting and whatnot and then I, again I just use my uh, 45 degree uh, setting on my miter saw in my case my miter saw is uh, pretty accurate uh, for the 45 I've, I've checked it and rechecked it many times and I get uh, excellent results um, probably should tape the two boards together here because uh, they have a tendency sometimes to get pulled what the top one gets pulled a little bit more than the bottom one sometimes and and even if no matter how hard you grip the boards it might want to slide on you so some blue tape might be useful see there I started my cut a little slow got a little burnt but uh, that doesn't matter it, it'll glue up fine here you see the real secret to my uh, framing uh, doing wooden frames is a gross stable uh, jig framing jig uh, I don't think they uh, sell it anymore uh, but I think if you look on the web hard you can find uh, some of them still out there uh, it's just an awesome jig you have this orange handle that kind of helps you uh, move the two halves uh, away from or towards each other and you've got a few different angles of frames you could do I, I typically leave it here at the 90 degrees setting and you just got to take uh, and in my case I got a, a short side and a long side I'm gonna the only downside to this framing jig is it it can only do one corner at a time but uh, I'm a pretty patient guy so you just lower this middle uh, part of the jig down lock l squeeze the orange you know wrench the orange ha orange handle down to lock it in place and then grab your two uh, parts of your frame you want to glue together and you just kind of push it up against that black piece there and then slide it against the that centering jig that just helps align them um, and here I'm just sort of demonstrating I only need to one at a time actually here we go one so up against that edge there and those so I got those two surfaces I'm pushing against and as I push it against those two surfaces I can just push this uh, clamp jig here and then tighten it down and now it's clamped the board that first board into place registered up against that centering uh, the centered piece of the jig and then clamp the second board into place same procedure now I can open the orange handle uh, orange handle and take that uh, temporary jig out of the middle out of the way and then as you just keep tightening it together sliding the two pieces together you get a perfect match and so I usually just test it make sure it looks good I'm happy with it I got you know flush on the top and then open it up again in the you know it's you know it's going to register that same position when I close it so I can go ahead and put glue on the uh, two faces and clamp it together and then you know with uh, this sort of a uh, you know yellow glue it's going to harden pretty fast so it doesn't take too long to do the whole frame glue it all up And here's after the four sides have been glued together with that uh, jig. I'm using some armor seal. Um, the first coat, I just kind of flood the surfaces. And within five minutes, in my case, probably a little less because it started getting tacky pretty quick here. But within five minutes, I flood it real quick. And then, and then I get a rag and wipe off the uh, uh, excess before it gets too uh, sticky or tacky and that gives us the first coat uh, I know it says you only need like uh, maybe three or four coats to build up this way you kind of flood it and then wipe it and flood it and wipe it like three or four times but I wasn't happy with the the uh, consistency I was getting so I I ended up doing some very fine coats between and it took me about somewhere around eight to eleven coats to get it to here's the dried first coat 
later at the end here, I'll show you the what it looks like with eight to eleven coats. I can't even remember how many there were. So many coats I did. They, I just I put them on real fine, almost like a French polish technique in a way. It was just patted it very thin, let it dry. I could only get about two coats a day that way, and uh, the result turned out pretty good. Here you can see I used some uh, fender washers and screws as a way to hold the uh, sandwich uh, backer board and matting in there and I had a little uh, hanging hook I, you know standard one you can find in a hardware store hook that on the top uh, here you can see I'm, I'm heating up my branding iron I like to brand my uh, name on my little projects so that'll follow it uh, wherever it goes and then uh, here's the finished result uh, hanging in the hallway at the door entrance of our house uh, came out pretty good I think uh, my wife did a great job on her cross stitch and the uh, the finished coat here, you can see some of the gloss sheen from the light came out really nice. The, I'm very happy with it. A beautiful mahogany. And uh, that's it.